Hello and welcome back to another video. Today, with my coffee, it will be more of a live demonstration. Because in one of my last videos, I showed you how you can take advantage of the auto.envim and the Quarto Envim plugin to add code completion for Quarto documents. But today, we will take this a step further. We will add code completion, language features, all that kind of stuff to any language embedded in another document that you might want. For example, people use this to get an SQL language server attached to SQL that is in code strings in Rust code, for example. Um, but today we will use NeoArg, um, which is like the NeoVim equivalent of org mode in Emacs, as an example where we can get code features in NeoArg code chunks. So let's jump onto my desktop. This is what we have now, for example, in Quarto documents, where we have our, our regular document and in there we have code chunks and we get language features like hover completion or hover documentation and auto completion. And we want to get the same for, uh, Orgma, for New York documents. So let's open one of these. And this is what they look like. I have actually not installed the proper Neorg extension in this. So, uh, and we will actually not do this today because I want to show you how we can get this from scratch. Um, but if you are working with Neorg, of course, you probably already have this set up, um, but we will do so from scratch now. So we don't, don't have anything here. What the first thing we want to do is is install the tree sitter grammar for this. And I think I have already installed it, so it should be fine. But I have not set up anything else. And what we want to do is get code completion and code features for these things, right? We have a code chunk here. We have a code chunk here with, with Lua code. And then we have a code chunk here with Python code. How do we do that? Uh, what we need to do is define injections for tree sitter. Now these injections are already in defined in the tree sitter uh, in in the tree sitter plugin for a bunch of languages, but not for New York. You can see here in the GitHub, if you go to queries of Envim tree sitter, there's a bunch of languages. For example, for Markdown, we already have where is it? Markdown, there we go. For Markdown we have highlights, which define how stuff looks like. We have indents, we have folds, and we have injections. And they define that, for example, for a fenced code block, we get the language uh, in this query, and we identify it with underscore lang, and then they apply a custom directive to extract the language, because in Markdown, in the code chunk headers, there can be more stuff than just the language. It will actually be even easier in uh, New York. Um, and then, we get these injections and we take the author.envim plugin, which takes these injections, extracts the code from your document, creates hidden documents behind the scenes to which your language server can attach. So to configure Otter, which we want to have configured before we set all this up, you can either refer to one of my previous videos, I will probably link down below, or you go to the readme here, you make sure you have Otter set up, either by passing in lazy envim the opts as an empty table or by calling the setup method. And then you need to make sure that in your envim CMP configuration you're having, you have the otter source. So you can also get auto completion and more of the other stuff. And then once you activate otter, you can use the otter functions, but you can also set key bindings for those, of course. Uh, and today we will actually just use a development function from otter. Uh, otter.dev setup, which will just activate a couple of key bindings as an example. So let's uh, see how, how tree sitter views this document. TS inspect. No, it's actually just inspect tree. Inspect tree. And we see we are in this chunk here and we get the highlights down here. So we get this syntax tree of everything. We have, for example, here arranged verbatim tag, which is perfect. So this whole thing, the tag, and in there, there's a tag name. You can see it highlighted when I hover over here, it's highlighted here. We 
which has one word and assume this word is the language. Now this is not only here for code, we can have other tags, right? And later we want to make sure that we don't capture those for our injections because we don't want to inject Python as a language into this hello for example. Now we can hit O to open our query editor. And now we can write our custom queries. So what we want is this arranged verbatim tag. And we can attach something to it just to, to see it's highlighted. So now it, when I hover over it, everything is arranged verbatim tag. So we want to get a bit more specific, right? So let's get more specific. We want a tag that is followed by, or that contains a tag name as a name with a para parameter. So we have a name that is a tag name. Let's hover over it and we see all our tags are highlighted but it also highlights our other tag, which we don't want to, uh, to get. So we need to add a directive. In this case, we want to ask for equality of the add tag, yeah, our tag name would be code. And now the other tag is no longer highlighted. Now after the tag name, we get some tag parameters and the first parameter is the one we care about. This is the actual language we want to inject later on. So let's add the tag parameters. And in here, we add a tag param. Let's call it length for now. And this is good. Now we can head over to the tree sitter documentation to see what it should be actually called. So we can see here in injections, we have a content and we have a language. So this here, so this lang should inject, should in fact be called injection dot language. Now we have our language correctly labeled. What about the content? We can see here, well, there's a content name here, so this comes, ne comes next. Content, just match anything and just call it injection.content. Now every code chunk is correctly labeled with a language and a content. We don't need the test thing anymore. And now the big question is where we put this? Well, we go into our configuration. So this is my config directory. And this is one of the instances where file tree is actually useful. We can go into an after directory, which means this code will be executed after other plugin code. And we want to add some queries. Now I have some for Markdown and Markdown Inline already. I don't have a folder yet for New York. Nork, I guess is the file type name and in here, we want to add injections.scm because that means everything we, we do here will be appended to the other queries we already get from other plugins, for example. So if we later on install the complete New York extension um, that brings its own queries, this will not replace it, it will extend it. So I need to copy this chunk again, get it in here and save. And let's see if we go inspect tree again and we toggle the injection highlighting using capital I search for Python for example we see indeed that this is now Python and in here it correctly recognizes everything as Python now we have not set up any highlighting but that's off. okay we don't need highlighting for this right now so what we can do now is having auto configured, we activate it. I have a shortcut for this and link to my config is of course in the description. 
I have now activated Otter. We can verify that it worked by going to, well, we already see diagnostics, so we know this part worked. So let's list hidden buffers. We can see now we have the Otter buffer for Python, we have the Otter buffer for Lua. Otter buffer for Lua. We can open them and see this is the buffer that contains only the Python code. And the other buffer, I guess seven, only contains the Lua code. So that means in here, we now get completion for Python and we get completion for Lua. And we also get documentation depending on what code chunk we are in. And at this point, I want to give a big shout out to GitHub user Ben Lubas, who made some amazing pull requests to Otter to actually properly handle things like leading white space in Neoc documents. Because here, uh, this part is easy, it's like in, in a quarter document, but here we have everything indented, so we need to make sure to properly dedent everything before putting it in the Otter buffer. But then when we translate between requests from the language server, it needs to take into account this offset. And he made an amazing pull request, so shout out to him. And also check out his other plugin, for example, Molten Envim, which is also very handy for data science stuff. And that's all from me today. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.